This video is a production of the Fourth Universalist Society in the City of New York. This video is part of our Learning with Fourth program, a series of a digital adult education. My name is Ember Kelly. Thanks for joining us for this adult religious education video about our December theme, Thinking and Reading Critically. Throughout the day, we encounter so much information. If we want to be well-informed, it's important that we consume information in a critical way. Today, I want to talk about a basic way to start doing that. It's three questions to ask. Who, what, and why? Let's start with who. When you approached a text, a story, media, history, or a sacred book, a conversation, really anything, it's always important to ask who who is talking, writing, or producing? What is their background? How could this have influenced them? This applies whether reading a text written thousands of years ago or a new story written yesterday. We often talk about privilege in our lives, and it's also important to think about how our backgrounds and privilege may frame the way that someone thinks about something. This should be something we consider as we think critically. What might their background cause them to think is more important or less important? For example, in the case of news, we should think about who the sources are. are. Articles about police mostly just echoing the words that have been given by the police departments? If an article is praising a public figure, who is writing this article? Is there funding or conflict of interest? Are the sources anonymous from a think tank? Or is something basically an advertisement? These should be things we think about reading the news. Grand Rapids police flood streets with officers to target violence and just to talk. Here is an example from my hometown of Grand Rapids, Michigan. As one reads the article, most of the quotes are from the police department and police chief. Despite talking about helping communities feel safer, no quotes come from the community. Who is talking in this reporting? The police. A local group, the Grand Rapids Institute for Information Democracy, analyzed this news article and looked at patterns concerning police reports in the local media. Their analysis points out that each of the news agencies don't verify the claims of the GRPD, nor do they question the effectiveness of deploying more cops over the weekend. The same pattern holds true elsewhere. Next we move to what. What is being said? What is being implied? What information might not be included? What information might be behind the scenes? What is the context? Analyzing what is being said, looking for the people who might be on the margins of what is said or written, looking for context and deeper information. This is critical, especially in engaging sacred text and history. Bertolt Brecht, a German poet, wrote in his A Worker Reads History, Young Alexander conquered India, he alone? Caesar beat the Gauls, was there not even a cook in his army? Philip of Spain wept as his fleet was sunk and destroyed, were there no other tears? Frederick the Great triumphed in the Seven Years' War, who triumphed with him? We cannot take things out of their context if we truly want to understand them, and we have to consider what voices aren't included Many people engage in what is called great man theory, thinking that history is made only by the leaders. And many times we leave out behind the scene story. We're missing puzzle pieces to the wider meaning. We have to look at the whole of what is being said, which relates closely with our next question, why? Our final of our three basic questions is why? Why are we being told this? Is it part of a consistent pattern? For a good example, let's turn to American history and how we read that. I remember being told in history class about Manifest Destiny, that Americans just felt pulled by destiny to settle the whole of the country. 
And while there was mention of it being a past belief, it was never tied to broader patterns in the US. And it's still a story that exists in media that we consume to this day. And so we are informed about it, but not about its connection to colonialism, to industrial expansion, to the expansion of slavery, and so much more. And why are we told of our destiny? Because it still fuels American exceptionalism and the American world order today. Americans are taught through history lessons to think that America is the light of freedom to the world, that it is still our destiny. Remember to always be thinking about the things you're engaging. Remember who, what, why, and always look at the context. In a world pervaded by nonstop news, advertisements, movies, and music, as well as a constant stream of social media, it is vital that we stop and examine the things that we consume. <laughs>